Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here, and uh, I first want to start off with this video saying that I am using a new microphone, uh, a completely new headset. It is the HS Creative Fatality 800, I believe it is, and I got it for a killer price, so that's pretty much why I got it. Um, so if you notice any differences in the sound quality, that's that's good, I guess. Uh, go ahead and leave me a comment saying if it's better, or worse. Uh, maybe the same, I don't know, and um, I'm sorry if I'm talking too quiet or too loud, I don't really know how, what volume my voice should be at with this microphone, it's my first time using it, but um, hopefully it improves the quality a little bit. Uh, second thing I want to say is Brennan Soft got a new logo, it's very nice, and uh, I guess I'll start with my video. So uh, I actually came out with a new software, a new piece of software the other day called Income Tracker, and it just pretty much tracks your income and uh, taxes and everything, and there's a very really nice screenshot of it right here, so go ahead and download that if you like. But inside this uh, application, there's actually two things called list view, which is like this box and uh, this box right here. And they have columns and uh, items in the column. And today I'm going to teach you how to use these list views to uh, organize your information. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go right to the application here. I've already started a new Windows Forms application, nothing special, and uh, we're just going to dive right in. So the first thing you're going to need is, uh, actually I think it's the only thing you're going to need, a list view, which is just a regular uh, Visual Basic component. And then once you add in the list view, you can go ahead and dock it in the parent container. And um, yeah, now before we get started adding any type of columns, we need to adjust a few properties. So we're just going to go through the properties and see what we see. Uh, so... Um, Full row select, you want to make sure that's true. Grid lines, want to make sure that's true. Uh, I think this is all we need. And um, view needs to be details. Otherwise, you just get a picture, and uh, I'm not actually going to dive into pictures uh, in this tutorial. But so once you get all those properties set up, you'll notice that there is uh, grid lines now, and it almost looks like a piece of paper. But um, yeah, so now we actually need to edit the columns so we have places to uh, put our items. So you can do this by clicking on this little box up here and uh, editing columns. And I'm just going to make uh, three simple columns. This one I'm going to name CLM underscore name, column name, and then the text is going to say name, with a capital N, of course, because that is proper. I'm also going to add another column, age, and uh, change the text. So this is just a simple application to keep track of customers, let's say. And uh, let's name this column email, just in case we need to contact these people. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. So um, now that we've got our columns set up, what we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to uh, fill our columns. So um, we're actually going to undock this for later purposes so we can uh, change information later in the tutorial. But right now, when the form loads, we're going to want to um, fill in some information here. And uh, what you're probably going to want to do is make a read from a text file or a database or something like that. But for this tutorial, we're just going to keep it simple and we are going to... Um, just add information programmatically. So the first thing we want to do is actually tell the list view that we're going to start updating it. So we're just going to list view uh, one dot begin update, and this just lets it know, hey, we're changing something. And then what we need to do is actually create a new item to put into this list view. So uh, we're just going to dim li as new or as list item, or not list item, list view item. My bad. And uh, we're just making it li for a list item, even though that's not it. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> and then we're going to say li equals, and then we want to access our list view and tell it that we want li to be a new list view, or a new list view item. Now, once you open up parentheses, um, it asks for text. Now, the way list view works is uh, this first column is main, pretty much the main column. And then every other column is a sub item. 
if you will. So uh, if we say, if we put a name, the sub item of name would be age, and the sub item of age would be email. So that'll help us later on. But so since this is the main item, we're going to uh, add a name here, which is Brandon. And then we're also going to say li dot sub items, because um, as you remember, we just said that each additional column is a sub item. So next in order would be age which uh, I'm just going to put a random age. Don't want to disclose my information. And um, then we're going to do the same thing for email. Okay, and then once we do that, we want to tell the list view that we're done updating it. List view one dot end update. And then we want to refresh the list view. So it has the most current uh, curtain entries. So um, once we start the form, or start the application, you'll notice that this information is actually filled in. Name, Brandon, age 99, email, and uh, there's the email that we provided. So um, that is really easy to do. Now if you want to add a second column, all you need to do is um, create a new list item. So then we're going to also say dim li2 as list view item and li2 equals list view one dot items dot add and let's just say this guy's name is Patrick and uh, L oh I put list two it's li2 my bad and then we're going to add the sub items of the second row list oops list li2 dot sub items dot add and this guy's age is going to be 76 and li2 li2 dot sub items Add, and uh, this is just going to be Patrick at Patrick.com. And uh, there we go. We should have added a second row. And if we uh, test it out, yeah. So now we've got Brandon's information and Patrick's information. And uh, that's all good. So now that we've added this information, you're probably going to want to um, access this information. So um, if you double click, let's say, if you double click Brandon, you want it to. Um, pop up with a message box with their age. So no big deal. We can access their information very easily, especially information just in a different column. So what we want to do is double click on the list view and uh, make sure we go to the double click event, which is somewhere over here. Double click. And then we just want to display a message box, which is the message box code. And this is going to say list view one dot selected selected items dot and then we scroll down and look for a property that looks good uh, item dot and um, the index of the item in the collection to retrieve dot call no dot text okay so this possibly looks good and um, age is the middle column so it's good uh, indexes always start with zero so it goes zero one is age and um, I haven't really used this code before so let's check out check it out and see if this works so we're gonna double click and uh, it gives us an error no big deal there value of one is not valid for index okay Okay, no big. Then we're going to change that to zero, and then uh, dot oh sub items. That's good. Dot uh, item, and this one is going to be item one. Dot text. There we go. That should do it. Yes. Okay. So that was a long string of code, but um, we're pretty much just accessing the selected item with the index of zero because since there's a selected item there's not going to be more than one selected item well actually if you hold control you can select more than one item but for this purpose we're not going to do that and then uh, we're going to get the sub item uh, the first sub item which is uh, this one and uh, the text of that which is in this case 99 so now we know how to access uh, this information and we can also do the same to change the information uh, so let's just uh, it shows a message box and then it subtracts the age by one. So the first thing we need to do is um, get the actual age. 
So we're going to dim age as integer equal to, and then we're going to convert the age to an integer, easily done with the cint command, and then we're going to get the age selected, which is the same code that we have up here. And uh, then we're going to say age equals age minus one, because we're subtracting one from the age. And then we're saying list view one dot selected items dot item zero dot sub items dot item one dot text equals age dot two string. So we can access the age simply by uh, getting it, just like in a text box, or we can change it just by setting it, just like in a text box as well. So um, we simply set it to age, and then we converted that to a string, so it would work. And uh, let's try this out. So we double click on Brandon, and it should display 98 in the mess or 99 in the message box, and then change it to 98. And it does. So if we keep double clicking, it'll eventually go down really far. Uh, so this was your basic tutorial on using a list view. Um, hopefully this helps you make uh, data-based applications. It really works well if you're trying to access data from a MySQL uh, database. So hopefully this will help you out a little bit. And uh, thanks for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you think about the new microphone quality. Uh, I'll see you guys in future videos, and I'll talk to you later. Peace.